Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm going to talk about the BBC today. No, not the British Broadcasting Corporation, they never have me. I'm going to talk about bags, books and cannons. Photographic books, photographic bags and Canon rangefinder cameras. Photographic bags. They're a real problem. Well, they're a real problem for me. I've got too many of them. I've got a cupboard, I would say under the stairs, but we're in a top flat, so we don't actually have a cupboard under the stairs. I have a cupboard that is absolutely brimming with camera bags. Um, most of them in use with camera equipment in because I have several different kits that I transport around. My 35mm rangefinder kit, my uh, 5.4 kit, my medium format kit, I have another bag that has my flash heads in, um, you get the idea. But in general, I'm not satisfied with any particular one bag that I have, um, which is a bit of an issue. Um, it was particularly a bit of an issue when I needed to buy a new bag for my Leica rangefinder kit and my Canon rangefinder kit. Mm, that's two camera bodies and a couple of lenses really. Um, so, what did I do? I decided to go a completely different route. I found online these. They are bag liners, bag inners, padded um, and just like the inside of a normal camera bag but without the outside of the normal camera bag round it. And that's really quite a good idea, for me at least, because I tend not to like camera bags that look like camera bags. Um, it's a good way of getting robbed. But this will fit in anything. This will fit in a conventional backpack, in a messenger bag, and they're available in all kinds of different sizes and from all kinds of different sources, eBay, Amazon, all kinds of places. This one was about 16 pounds, um, and it's quite adequate. Um, it has a flap that comes off and what I've done is I've bought a interesting little uh, messenger bag that um, there's nothing in it, there's no dividers, there's no padding. Currently it's got a couple of my lenses in either end. But it's just a messenger bag. And this liner will quite happily tuck inside and everything can be accessed from the side that's facing towards me and there's a waist strap on this as well. This bag was 13 quid so I mean that's not camera bag prices. I'm not expecting it to be super waterproof or anything like that but it will take my Leica 3, it will take my Canon, a couple of lenses, all the film I need and it's a little tiny package that will go around my waist and it opens so that I can see the contents and the great thing about it is that I can take this inner out, I can put it in a different bag if I want to and I intend to get several more inner linings and basically do this to all my bags. Where I won't be doing it is on my backpack, which is currently housing my 5.4 kit. Uh, backpacks, there's a should be such a great idea, but I don't find them so when most of them have an absolutely major design flaw. And that design flaw is that the opening where you access all your equipment is on the back and 
anybody can walk up to you in a crowded environment, unzip the back of your bag and take away your camera or lens. Either that, or you go put your backpack down on the ground to get stuff out of it, and you just put your straps and the bit that goes against your back on the damp ground, in the mud, in the sand. It just doesn't make any sense, and yet 80%, if not more, of backpacks have their opening zips on the back worst place out. I don't worry so much with my 5.4 kit, it kind of it doesn't have to be accessed quickly, but with everything else um, I just simply wouldn't use a backpack. So I'm going to be getting some more of these liners, they can be stored in my plastic boxes that I use for storing kit on shelves and I can simply take them out and put them into the bag that I want them to go in. Anyway, more of news on that as I use them, but I think it's a great solution. I've also got some photographs that I took on the Canon and the Leica whilst I was out, and I will go, get on to that in the bit where I'm going to talk about the new Canon rangefinder. Let's get on to the book bit. Now to the book part. I decided I was going to turn my photographs from 2020, or the best of them, into a photo book. And here it is. Uh, I created it with Blurb, and I created it with their software, which is uh, called BookWrite. I had to check up on that. And it's actually turned out rather well. Um, Here's uh, one of the end cards um, and uh, images, which if you've followed my channel, you've probably seen before. Um, it's a lovely paper. It was, I think, about £24. Um, but it's a nice thing to have, and I'm putting them on sale, so if you want to buy one, you are more than welcome to. I'll put a link in the description. It's also interesting for other people, I think, who want to do books that Blurb certainly seems to have their software sorted out quite well for it. Although one image did come out slightly differently than I predicted it would. But anyway, Blurb, easy to use. I've tried other platforms before like Lulu. Um, I, Back in the day, I used Create Space, but I don't think they even um, do that kind of thing anymore. But yeah, this uh, I may even be giving away a copy of this shortly, so we'll see what happens there. But Blurb, highly recommended, really cool software, and really quite fun to do. So I'm moving on from books. We'll go to the Canon part, Canon rangefinder, that is. You're probably familiar, if you've watched any of my other videos, with my Leica 3B. Absolutely love this camera to bits. I've got a 90mm Elmar on there. But my problem really was that you can never have too much of a good thing. I quite fancied another rangefinder. I've got several Russian ones, but I fancied something higher quality. And so, I went and bought this. This is a Canon 2D rangefinder. It's, it's very similar to the Barnett Leicas um, in that uh, it loads film from the bottom, which some people have a real problem with, but I don't have that at all. Um, and it's very, very similar except it has a great party trick that the Leica doesn't have in that it has a combined rangefinder and viewfinder window which is absolutely fantastic. It's not uh, a deal breaker with the Leica because it's a Leica, you know, it's just great. But the Canon just is a nice camera. 
really is. Now, I've done um, quite an in-depth review on this in my blog, which I'll give a link to in the description on my website. But what can I tell you about it? Here it's fitted with a Canon f1.8 lens, one of the early ones, one of the chrome mounted ones, which is a handsome lens, but it's quite heavy. This is a beautiful camera, and they're not that common in this country. Um, it's very similar to a Barnett Leica. It's heavier um, by a bit. Not a massive amount, but enough that you can notice it. Slightly less comfortable around the ends of the body because it's not curved like the Leica. It's maybe a little bit taller, maybe a millimetre or so taller. But all of that is just not important because it feels beautiful in the hands and it works really well. I have a few criticisms. The viewfinder window is minuscule. It's really tiny. But the biggest thing in this camera's favour is that it was £90. Not with a lens, obviously, but it was 90 quid. The quality is not that much worse than a Leica, which cost over double this. This is a 1952 camera and is just really nice in hands and really nice to use. I've got the results, I'll be showing I'm sharing some of those. But it's a really nice bit of kit and you see them around you see very few of them but you do see them around and you see them for around a hundred sometimes 150 pounds sometimes as low as what I paid for this one let me say they are a complete bargain and if you like rangefinder cameras and you like interchangeable lens for rangefinder cameras then treat yourself to one of these. They're just really nice. Now on to the results from this and also the results from one of my other little acquisitions which was the Jupiter 12 35mm lens. Now I did a photo walk um, as best I could under lockdown conditions, which was literally walking a mile down the road to a place called Hollow Ponds, where I've shown you some photographs before from. But I did this at, I think it was six, six o'clock, 6.15 in the morning, and managed to get some nice shots of sunrise and mist and ice, and it was really quite cool. So why don't I show you those? Hope you enjoyed those. I got freezing cold taking them. But I also tested my camera wrist strap. I made that out of paracord. I'm going to give you a link to the video on YouTube that I used to uh, learn how to do the knots. And I think these are a brilliant idea for rangefinders that aren't too heavy. You, know, you can 
they won't, they don't get snatched, you can manipulate and have you a cup of coffee while you go out and um, take a walk with your one other allowed friend at the moment when that happens. I think they're great, I think they're really useful and it's something that you can make yourself while you're still locked indoors. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the content of this video, please consider giving me a like and if you want to see more, well, you could even subscribe. Well, you take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.